scriptures from the New Testament, but I only brought two. So, uh, before I go on with today's topic, I would just like to read that scripture uh, to you. you. You remember that the first one was from John chapter 10, the chapter of the Good Shepherd. And there, Yeshua, Jesus, says that I have this flock, but I have also other sheep. And, and they will be gathered and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Hallelujah. And of course, that shepherd is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So, uh, the third, and then the second scripture I brought was from Romans chapter 15. A very, very key scripture. Because there Paul teaches us by revelation through the Holy Spirit that when Jesus gave his life when he offered himself for the sins of humanity it was not only for you and I from the peoples, the Gentile peoples, but it is, was for the Jewish people, very specifically. So it says there in that verse which we read that he did this, he became the servant of the Jewish people. And we, we read, you know, the other, the, the key scripture that I brought was from Isaiah 49, where it speaks about the same servant of the Lord. But anyway, in that verse in Romans 15, Paul teaches us that he became a servant, Jesus became a servant to confirm the promises or to show that God is faithful and God is faithful in whatever situation you are in be sure God is faithful he will not abandon you he will not give you over he will come through for you and he is the same God for the Jewish people and to also to show that the promises that God gave to the fathers of the Jewish people, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and through the prophets, that they are all firm, that we can really believe them. We can, we know that they will be fulfilled. Because every promise God has given will be fulfilled. So that was actually the third scripture that I wanted to bring yesterday. And it is found in second, no, first Corinthians, yeah, I believe. Let us look. Uh, first Corinthians, I believe it is there in the beginning. So second Corinthians chapter one. And here again, now we will declare the word of God together. Hallelujah. There's some great power when the children of God pray his word and declare it and proclaim it. It's not only to us who are here and to maybe some people that are hearing from outside, but it is into the heavenly realm because we speak the eternal word of God. So this is now 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and we will read verses 18 and 19 and 20. So 18 through 20. Hallelujah. But as God is faithful, Hello, are you asleep? Wake up, brothers and sisters, once again, let's try. But as God is faithful, but as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. Our word to you was not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was preached among you by us 
By me, Silvanus and Timothy. Was not yes and no. But in him was yes. For all the promises of God. In him are yes. And in him, amen. And in him, amen. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. Through us. Through us. So when we believe the word of God and live in it and believe that God is faithful and he, every promise has received its yes and amen in Jesus. That glorifies our Father. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So now I will turn to the, 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 the topic. Uh, my, my, my topic. Prayer and intercession. And I must say that I do this with great humility and a certain amount of trembling. Because 